I got two episodes into My Dress Up Darling, which made me angry, and another good reviewer, Nicholas Purcell, recommended Love Live to quell my vast anger. Love Live. That's right, I did try that once. What prevented me from getting past episode one, though? I don't remember. Well, tastes change over the years, so I'll give it one more shot. I searched Love Live through Crunchyroll on my Wii U, and I specify that because I think there's some differences between web browser and console versions of Crunchyroll. It gave me three options. Love Live, Nijigasaki High School Idol Club, Love Live Sunshine, and Love Live Superstar. I was sure there was just a plain Love Live, was there not? Not wanting to turn on my laptop that morning, I read each of the synopses to deduce which came first. Nijigasaki High is about a young girl who joins the idol club with her friend, Sunshine is about a young girl starting the idol club with her friend, and Superstar is about yet another young girl starting an idol club from scratch. Is this a JoJo reference? My understanding of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is that you can start at the start of a season and have a worthwhile story that could hypothetically stand alone without its predecessors or descendants, and that's what I strongly suspect is going on here. So eeny meeny miny mo, let's give Sunshine a go. Chika Takami and her friend want to be school idols because Chika saw a clip on YouTube of Yu's performing once and thought it was amazing. Question, where did you find that on your keyboard? I had to go to Love Live's wiki to copy paste it to make this image. Regardless, the presence of Yu's was how I deduced I definitely didn't pick the first Love Live. They're mentioned almost every episode in season 1 in a way that makes it impossible for Yu's to be anything but the pro tags of a former Love Live, now being used as fan service to subconsciously hook the old viewer on the new Love Live. And I accidentally confirmed that while copy-pasting their made-up letter. Okay, so we have our goal of making a school idol club. Of course, nothing is as simple as it should be. Finding someone who actually knows how to compose music was surprisingly easy, one literally just showed up on the beach. Ha. <laughs> I've seen the intro, buddy. As they say, I'm several parallel universes ahead of you. Put on the skirt. Then there's that student council president. Five people. I always heard school clubs in Japan needed at least four. <laughs> I've seen the intro, buddy. Not only will you get over whatever peed in your Cheerios, but you will also sing and dance with the rest of them. Put on the skirt. I'm too shy to sing and dance in front of people. Well, guess what, kiddo? I've seen the intro. Your fate is sealed. Put on the skirt. I can't join the idols club. Yeah, what's your issue? I have to collect the seven Dragon Balls to resurrect my dead parents with our powers combined and save the Earth from Galactus, but I can only do that if my long-lost brother and I can save the town my parents are buried in from the Mafia and- That's nice. Listen, I've seen the intro. Save us a character arc and put on the skirt. Pretty sure everyone knows this song and dance, so let's talk about what it achieves as a cute character is doing cute things. We had hugs, nuzzles, a cheek poke, and a couple of face squishies. You see this Koisuru no Asteroid, I'm not asking you to be Gochiman Wasagi Dezuka, but you wasted your good art style not doing this. These girls also insisted on an unusual amount of hand-holding, especially during the first three episodes, and this may sound like a contradiction, but they didn't come across as gay with all the hand-holding, at least not to me, but they're still weird about it in their own right. Y'all wanna go downstairs and do your hand-holding? You're gonna fall doing that and we're a couple stories up. Yeah, if one of y'all falls and busts your head open, it will also be symbolic to the sudden end of your school idol dream. Great, make sure you mention that to the police when whichever of you survives has to explain why the other fell off a balcony. I was slightly disappointed when the hugs didn't carry on every episode. After episode 3, I was worried they had stopped that sort of thing entirely, but I can assure you, even if it seems to dial back some, it'll come back around. Credit where it's due, it makes a genuine effort towards relatability. I also know what it's like to run into opposition from family. I've been known to bring home the wrong girl, but I can't personally relate because my overcoming opposition has less to do with any actual willpower and more with the fact I become very unreasonable when I grow attached, and even the people closest to me cannot talk me down from dumb decisions. Okay, full disclosure, that was a very brief thing for one character. The center of Love Live Sunshine's efforts to be human is its theme, the will to try. There are some upperclassmen who tried the school idol thing before and it didn't work out, so naturally some of them become fairly discouraging to the protagonists. Not to the point of becoming antagonists, they're just slightly depressing until they join a course. More to themselves than anyone else, really, and I can only assume that this depression was so distracting that they were the only ones who weren't predicting the plot. I'm serious, I did pretty good predicting Season 1's plot, and Chica was right behind me. The school is getting shut down, that must mean we're going to make our school popular again and keep it alive! 
and she definitely tried to recruit student council president before she was ready to even approve of a school idol club. Probably just forgetting what episode it was. Hey, just a quick question. Not trying to ruin the mood, how did you all know where she went to cry? I can understand the one childhood friend having the epiphany that the girl would need to cry and where she would go to do so. How are you all here, though? Even if the one texted the rest of you, shouldn't she have shown up first and then the rest? How do you people consistently do this in unison? Why? Yeah, yeah, I'll stick around for that. Yeah, I still feel a little something. Oh, I thought you had more class than that. That's okay, it was time to take my dog outside anyway. I'll come back to you in, say, two or three minutes. That should give you enough time to show off some backsides. Oof, you really are mad at me for not getting emotional earlier. As much as I would have liked Love Life Sunshine to go about this another way, that actually did help differentiate the two girls with brown hair whose job was someone's childhood friend. I don't know when it happened, but for me they blurred into one character in spite of having seen them both in the same room at the same time. Maybe I just forgot the one existed, but either way, we're not going to blame that on my decreasing ability to keep track of moving objects. No, we're going to blame that on the overpopulation of Love Life Sunshine. Chica acquires nine members for her posse. Chica, why do you need so many girls again? Your one-time rival had two members and did just fine. I did open the door for Pokemon references earlier, didn't I? It was in the abundant members of Accords I found my highest and lowest points. On the downside, Yoshiko is going through the Chinibio phase, and if you don't know what that means, it means she gets up at 3 in the morning to walk to the gas station and challenge the cashier to a wizard's duel. No, Chica, I don't care how cute it is, you don't encourage the Chinibio phase. What if she grows up to be that one guy from Hunter x Hunter? Yoshiko just kind of rubs me the wrong way for very predictable reasons, but more importantly, she had such little value to the series. If she were removed, the series would lose one episode, possibly a second one in season 2 if it can't fudge something with one of the others, and a few more minutes of screen time throughout that could be recycled into an explanation of why the one girl is afraid of dogs. Ruby counterbalances. No, I don't know why the character art is getting better each time I add a new one to the video. Try to stay focused, please. Chica drawing her out with candy was wonderful, but she became a definitive favorite when she did, and I quote, her Rubyist. The phrase Rubyist was first used to motivate Ruby, and I had assumed Ruby was just tolerating the phrase of her silly goose friend, but this was not the case. Big Sis was motivated to pet her, and she replied to her head pats with the phrase, she did her rubiest. Guys, she did her rubiest, okay? Love Life Sunshine is a good anime, and my aforementioned rage is effectively quelled. However, I would have only paid money for season 2, where the predictability I mentioned earlier is resolved. Albeit, one of the surprise solutions completely defied the concept of time, but gave us a moment with all nine mouths stuffed with an orange so as to distract us from the massive logistical issue. Y'all are wearing heavy coats and miniskirts. Are you cold or not? In short, it was refreshing to sit down for tea and cookies with an anime, as opposed to my usual preference of having fistfuls of straight sugar forcibly jammed into my throat until I can no longer breathe. It easily- I'm sorry, what? I'm not one of the members of a course. Um, love to, but I have many things on my plate already. I'm almost done writing that book, and- I was in the intro? No! No!